Good morning, church. We're going to start off this beautiful Sunday with a wonderful pray song. So stand up to your feet, join us, and let's get this um, service started.
cries out too deep. There's a river that flows from the throne of God and is calling unto us, church, that we can walk in it, we can live in it, we can swim in it, we can joy, have fun in it. Come on, that's the Spirit of God that is calling us to walk with Him. Amen. Come on, let's give God a praise offering this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Turn to someone next to you and tell them, welcome to Clear Ministries. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So good. I've got a rowdy bunch this morning, so good. Great to be in church this morning. Well, we'd like to welcome any first-time visitors here this morning. So if you are here for the very first time, we'd like to give you a a clear welcome, church. Let's give them a welcome this morning. So good. We believe that you will enjoy the service because God is present. But most of all, you will learn and find out that we are a group of people that love Jesus Christ. It's all about Him. And we're here to serve Him. We're here to love on Him. We're here to acknowledge Him and to lift Him up. It's all about Him. And we, just, we just glorify Him. It's so good. I'm going to ask the deacons, you can go ahead with that offering. That's praise God. Well, we have a, a number of announcements this morning, um, some exciting things, some um, things that need to be said, and I want, to, I want to chat. So let's just go through a couple of them. Um, young adults tomorrow evening are kicking off, and they are, um, they've got a, a great series that they're going to be doing over this term. It's called Living the High Life. So they starting on the 30th of January. There's uh, Joey and Hannah Gray. Um, they are amazing, amazing youngsters. And they have got a, a wonderful series. And really encourage if you're between the ages of 18 and 35, go and join them. You will be blessed. You will grow. You will be strengthened. And most certainly you will get to know Jesus more. Amen. Then we've also got Youth This Friday is kicking off as well. They, they've got a, a, a fun um, evening that's ahead of them. They've got what they call the Straw Balloon Soccer. So they I have no idea what they're going to do, but it sounds like a lot of fun. So I really encourage you also, if you're between the ages of 12 and 18, go and join them this Friday. Foundations. Um, we are shifting a number of things in this, in this year because we believe we're going to do things um, a little differently that we can actually grow, we can encourage people. So what we're going to do with foundations for a start is going to happen not on a Wednesday, but it's going to happen on a Tuesday. Everybody say Tuesday. Tuesday. What's happening on Tuesday? Foundations. foundations. But foundations... Uh, in order to go on to foundations, you will need to register. But what we're doing now is we actually got a tri booking system that is going up, and there is a Q code as well as the uh, the booking reference. I'm going to ask everybody to take out your cameras, your phones, take them out. I can see Daniel. You look at you looking at me very sheepishly. Take them out. Take a photo of it so that you've got it. Pastor Lorraine will also put this on our website and on our Facebook. And the reason for that is, is because you will need to register for foundations. And that's where you're going to go register. So if somebody else asks you, why, how do I get involved with foundations? You can show them the photo. All right. So I really encourage you. This, uh, the way that we're going to be doing this particular foundations is that you jump on, on the, the tribe booking. You will have to register for each evening that you're going to attend. For those who have not completed one or two of them, you can actually go and select those particular ones. And tribe booking will notify you, remind you, let you know, and, and tell you when you're going to be up. Um, that is a seven-night session. Eight nights because the last one is actually a, a vision night. So, yep, eight nights. Right, 
then life groups will be starting this Wednesday, 1st of February. That's pretty exciting. And uh, yeah, you can, you can clap hands because this is pretty awesome. And uh, this term, we actually have an amazing series called Fruit of the Spirit. Pastor Lorraine put these notes together, and they are great. They are really, really good. You actually get into the fruit of the Spirit, and it's great to be able to understand, know, and how to apply and walk in the fruit of the Spirit. Then on, uh, at the end of this, um, uh, this service, we've got clear kids. And uh, the term is up. The kids are back at school. So we've got all the kids there that are here this morning. We're going to have clear kids. And they too are doing a series called Fruit of the Spirit. And uh, Miriam has put together a, a great uh, a set of notes and, is, and, and that, um, a curriculum for this, for this term. And I really believe it's going to be pretty awesome. So send your kids. Let them go up there. Let them... Uh, Learn, let them be grounded in what the Holy Spirit is doing. Amen. Keenies, uh, Henry and Kath are over there. Wave hands there, Henry and Kath. Yeah, they want it. They are amazing people. We love them heaps. And they are um, the head of 55 to Eternity. And uh, they are uh, getting together again very soon and I really encourage you that you actually get together if you're between the ages of 55 and over to connect with them they love Jesus and they love to reach out and minister and talk about Jesus but also they have good fun have lots of food and enjoy life praise God is Jess here this morning Pastor Jess not you want to come up Pat? good morning everybody um so we've got some exciting blossom is starting up again and um so we've got really exciting events for this year some special guest ministers we've got a conference coming up and a movie night and some fun activities but we want to plan the year last year we said to we had a, a day at jess pastor jess's home and we all came together with some ideas and we want to discuss this more in depth next week so anybody is welcome to come any woman who wants to join blossom committee or be part of the team and um, next sunday after church we will be all meeting um probably in the prayer room or we'll just have a small gathering here so if you want to please come next sunday after church but then i've got another exciting um, um, um event that's starting a new ministry that God's put on my heart, and that's for cherry, it's going to be called Cherry Blossoms. So Cherry Blossoms are for all moms and babies, but you don't have to have a baby to come to Cherry Blossoms. <laughs> if you're a mom without a baby, or you're an, an Omi like me, <laughs> you can come if your babies are big, and they're 27 already, then you can still come. So it's for any women. So it's almost like kind of, you know, it's, it takes a village to raise a child, so we just a whole lot of women coming together and we're going to be aunties and, 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 and sisters and mommies and um, we're going to have the little babies play with us and we're going to sing with them and we're going to do worship with them and we're going to um, do little Bible studies with them and have fun with the kids. So if you haven't had a cuddle from a baby for a long time and you're a mommy and you just want or an homie like me, this is the place to come. It's a great opportunity to meet other um, friends and make friends with other women. I just believe we live in a time where we need to be a community and we need to get to know other ladies. So come along. We are starting next Monday. It will be in the day at 9 a.m. in the morning in this auditorium. So come and join us on our launch morning. And that's all from me. <laughs> Thank you. So good. Praise God. Then for those who are our keen prayers. We uh, really invite you to uh, come in the mornings to our war room every morning between 9 and 9.45 uh, where we get to pray, we get to uh, intercede for, for the congregation, for this church, for uh, the service, as well as for our nation, for our, for our uh, communities, our, our, our cities. And we believe that God is doing amazing things. And how many of you know that prayer is powerful? And prayer changes things. Listen, we've got to pray. Every single one of us have got to pray. So we should actually have everybody in there. It'll be very difficult to fit all of us in there. But certainly, we should all be desiring to go in there. Amen. 
then we also last year we started a uh, an incentive or a, 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 a ministry that helps other people and we've been very blessed to have uh, core um, running this and, and organizing this and this year we've kicked off again we're going to continue with that same subject I'm going to ask core won't you come up and share a little bit about what's happening and uh, what directions we're going into I'm pretty excited about this is this is something that God's doing and uh, I just love it when people step up and say use me God praise God bless you Thanks, Paul. morning church um, I thought I'll start off by asking you a question I hope you slept well last night that you can think about it so what type of a man was Boaz before he married Ruth ruthless, ruthless. fantastic <laughs> that's amazing that's very sharp so sometimes life can also be ruthless and sometimes people go through really tough times and that's where we have to help them and support them so from the 20th of february we will have a little storage space available now so if you've got really good furniture that you don't want to use anymore and that you feel could help someone else if you want to contact me i'll come pick it up from your house and we'll put it in the storage facility and then when people have nothing or struggle or need some help, then we can help them with that. But yeah, it, I, I really think it could make a difference. But also, if you notice people that are struggling, that can't buy groceries or really going through a tough time, please don't hesitate to call me that we can make a plan and that we can, you know, like help them through the difficult times that come up. And I'm just thinking of the war, the prayer room, sorry, but I won't be long. The other day, um, I went to school and I didn't sleep so nicely the night before. And I came out of school and I was feeling bad and I wanted to get into my car and uh, I pushed the remote and the car didn't want to open. And I pushed the remote again and didn't want to open. So I tried for half an hour, didn't want to open. So I phoned the company that they said when I bought the car would help you in any circumstance. And I phoned them, I said, listen, you need to come fetch me. They said, no, no they'll send someone. And I thought, but I haven't prayed yet. And just there was a little private corner and I went on my knee. I said, God can, God, can you help me please? I really need to get home. I'm not feeling well. I can't wait two hours for them to be here. And then it dawned to me, upon me that my wife's key is in my little school bag as well. So I actually used my wife's car key to try and open my car. And the moment I used my key, the car opened and it was all good. But it's amazing how just that little short prayer just that little short prayer in a very simple situation just changed everything. Thank you, Bill. Thanks, Cor. Well, that is a message in the making. You need the right key. And there is only one key. Praise God. Well, I've got another um, announcement. We are We've been speaking a lot about uh, evening service, and evening service uh, was due to start up at the end of January. However, we had a committee meeting this, uh, this week. We got around, we discussed where it's at, the teams, the amount of people that are on, on team, and um, the committee have uh, said we need to give it another month, another month to, to look at it. And the reason for that is because we've got a very small team. And we know that the year ahead is huge. We, we've got, we, we did some planning for the whole year. And we're very excited about this year. We believe that there's going to be amazing stuff. But to have an extra service is going to be very taxing. And if we keep the small team, and only the small team actually does it, we're going to burn them out. So we're very mindful about our teams. We love our team. We love our people. We don't want people to burn out. So we are going to be reserved. We're going to um, hold off on, on evening service. However, we are interested in actually getting more people on board. If that can grow and we can actually get people to be more committed, we can actually see people are stepping up and say, hey, use me, then we can consider it a lot more. In fact, there's a possibility that we might start a morning service, which is a lot easier on the team than having a morning and an evening service so we've got one morning service it'll just be a second morning service so we would like you as a congregation to pray 
we'd like you to be involved in praying and determining what God wants you to do. If you want to if you want to be used, step up. And I really encourage you, there are forms at the back there. If you're interested in volunteering, go at the back there and list and tell us this is the areas you want to be involved in. It's not easy running a ministry. We need people. The, everybody in this congregation is, is volunteers, and therefore we need people to step up. So I really encourage you, let's get on board. Let's get on board with what God is doing. God's got something amazing for this church got amazing things for the city so we really encourage you let's step up amen praise god then uh, i would also like to do something that i i want to do but i also don't want to do and that is pray for someone who is actually going to be leaving the church jody and seb have crept into our hearts and they've been an absolute blessing and we really appreciate them. But Seb, is a, uh, who's a doctor, has had the opportunity to go down south and study further and has an opportunity to get into a, 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 a prestigious, what is a university, isn't it? Or, or, or the Eldred. Okay. A hospital, which is basically down in Melbourne and is very sought after to get into. And... Because of that, he's taken the opportunity and he's taken his whole family down. So we're going to pray over him. We're going to pray over Seb and we're going to bless them on their journey. We're believing and trusting that they're going to be back and they are going to um, be blessed on their journey and God's going to provide for them wherever they go. So I'm going to call Jody. Won't you come up? And all the leaders, won't you come up? We just want to release and pray over them. These people are very precious to our hearts and they are amazing people. Come team. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So good. Did you want to say anything? Yeah. <laughs> well, the plan is initially to go down for a year. Um, my husband's on night shift, so he's not here today. And he'll be heading off this week, and I'll be here for probably another two more weeks before I go down. Um, but yeah, he's uh, got a job at the Alfred Hospital to finish up his training um, as an ED registrar. And um, yeah, we'll see. It's for a year initially. It might be for two. And we may be back, but we're just open hands with wherever God wants to take us. Um, and yeah, just trust that he has good things for us down there. And yeah, we're excited. And yeah. Good. Listen, the, these these couple have been involved in, uh, in in missionaries. In fact, both Seb and and Jody met on a mission. So I mean, that's in their hearts, and uh, they are passionate about missions. But I believe God's got something deeper, something richer for them as they as they pursue God. So won't you stretch out your hands as we pray for this this family, and as we release and and bless them on their journey. Father, we just thank you, Lord God, for your amazing grace and for your love poured out, Lord, and for this family that has come into our, our midst, Lord, that has blessed us, that has encouraged us, that has given us a fellowship, and also, Lord God, that you've, you've drawn closer to us, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, that your hand is upon their lives, Lord, and as they do this next phase or the next journey, Lord, we pray for them. We pray for your blessing. We pray for your, your Holy Spirit to be poured out upon them, for your anointing to be on them, Lord God. As they walk this journey, Lord, that they will find their path, that they will know what you, what you want for them in the next journey, Lord. Father, let your Holy Spirit guide them and lead them. Let your word be a lamp unto their feet, a light unto their path, Lord. And Father God, we just desire, Lord, that they would come back with bringing with them your blessing and your provision. And Lord, that they'll be stirred in their hearts to do what you've called them to do in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen. Right, praise God. Now I'm going to ask Max, won't you come up and do communion? Thanks, Max. Bless you. Korean for greeting. 
my New Year resolution is done. <laughs> but um, th- thank you, brothers and sisters, for um, this honor of talking about communion with you. Um, it's it's definitely an honor that I don't take lightly, and it keeps me up at night, along with Adalia. <laughs> so, <laughs> and also I hope I don't say anything wrong because I will hear about it at home. <laughs> but it's January. It's already January time flies and you know what I, I thank God that his love is it's driving me along because without it at some point in life I, I would have given up because I don't know I, I don't find a lot of value now in the worldly things just for the fact that they disappear and all my effort will be in vain and just not a nice feeling but heavenly things last forever and that's something you put effort in and it's not going to be in vain at all and um, so I guess my message is uh, I thank God for his love and I, I don't actually like doing the love part they describe in Korean thin it, because for me liking something meant to recharge you and um, get enjoyment from it otherwise you wouldn't like it so when I first read, you know, 1 Corinthians 13 about love, there's not a lot of liking in there. Love is patience. Patience, t- being tolerable and not get angry and not be annoyed. You don't have to do anything and it's draining you just to be tolerable. Love is kind. You have to be generous and considerate. You know, now you're giving something else, also draining you. You know, so I thank God His love is there to recharge me and keep me going because my flesh itself, I wouldn't bear to endure too long. I don't like my kids. They, <laughs> they drain the life out of me. But I love them to bits. It's got nothing to do with liking, you know. And then Jesus did the same. He did not like to be crucified. I don't know who would. But he went through it because God loves us. He loves God and he did it for us so we can get a relationship with him. So even if you don't like it, it's not an excuse to not show love because he didn't take that excuse to not be crucified for us and show his love for us. So as, as we take <laughs> the bread of his broken body. Think of the love that God has for you. Let that drive you and compel you. Thank you, Jesus. And let his blood remind you of the confidence that he has for you, that you have the hope in him that your goal, if it's heavenly, will last forever that he loved you and that lasts forever thank you Jesus thank you God thank you God and so let us continue with our worship of our Heavenly Father
Yeah. Mm-hmm.
love we don't have to earn his love he already gives us his love we just have to receive it Jesus paid all for all of our sins on the cross and he rose again conquering sin and death your situation does not define you God defines you hey 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 or scared he's right there holding you and he wants you to know he loves you he wants to comfort you you can be honest with him he's not afraid he's not afraid of what you have to say he's not afraid of how you feel he's not afraid of what you've done he loves you. He's with you. He fought for you. He won the victory for you. Receive him. Let him do what he needs to do. Let him be God. You just enjoy. Enjoy God's love on your life. And it always gets better. have known enough, but he'll show you more. There's no striving, just abiding. There's no striving.
at the right hand of the Most High God, God the Father. He's worthy of praise, church. He's worthy of honor. the concept of a king. We've lost the concept of knowing what a king means in the Western world. But to have a king means to respect and to honor, to obey, to serve. But for that to happen, we've got to understand His worth. We've got to understand the value. We've got to understand who He really is. And when Jesus hung on that cross, He said, it is finished. It is done. It means the price that was on your head because of your sin, it was paid in full. He set you free. He set you free not to do your thing, but to set you free to serve Him and to walk with Him and to honor Him and to lift Him up. Church, that is value. He's given us eternal life. He's given us the victory over sin. He's given us the ability to overcome in this world. in this world you may face many many troubles but he says don't be anxious don't worry because I have overcome Jesus overcome how much value is that to you this morning church how much value is that to you and when we sing all hail King Jesus what are you saying what are you meaning what is what are you saying with your heart how much value he has let's just sing that this morning all hail King Jesus all hail King Jesus
Thank you, Jesus. Come, let's give God praise offering this morning. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God is so good. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. You may be seated. I'm going to ask all the children's church to come up this morning. We're going to pray over them, release them. Look, they're excited. They're keen. These champions of God. Okay, everybody, if we want to stretch your hand out and bless these children. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that you love these children so much. Thank you, Lord, that you are with them, you're protecting them, you're walking with them. Lord, I ask you to bless Kids Church today and just let your presence be felt strongly and teach us about your word. And I thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Mary. Praise God. Praise God. For such is the kingdom of God. When Jesus held little children, they keen, they're excited, they passionate, they got energy, and they want to draw closer to God. Amen. We should be like that. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, I have the privilege this morning of inviting a very special person, people, a person we all know, we all love, we all value, and a wonderful woman of God. And uh, she is very loved by us. Um, won't you welcome Pastor Jenny Widrat to the pulpit? We love you heaps. She's going to minister the Word of God. Thank you, Pastor Bill. Another day. Is that true? Yes. Amen. That's good. Love it that you're going to Melbourne. Keep going in that call of God. So many people forget about the call of God today. God's callings is his enabling. He doesn't let us go. Question. Do you need a download of God's strength today? Yes. Oh, boy. I was listening to the preachers on the television this morning and one of the scriptures that was said is Isaiah 30, 15. You don't have to put it up. It's not there. It says, in quietness and confidence shall be your strength. And I don't know how your week was, but you didn't want my week. The best day was Thursday. Is that right, Joe? Mm. We had a good day on Thursday. Met people I haven't seen for a while and we chatted and went on. But I didn't have the best week at all. And you don't want to be here for the next 24 hours plus to hear all about it because I'm not going to be there talking about it anyway. <laughs> but see, it came to Friday morning and uh, there were some things I had to do. I had to go into town. Um, so I went. Didn't enjoy the first part of that. And then I thought, mm, second part, all right. I'll bite the bullet. I made an appointment at the dentist. <laughs> she said, have you got toothache? I said, no. Have you got problems with your teeth? I said, no. I do have teeth, though. <laughs> she said, well, he can see you at the end of March. Too bad if I've got toothache in the meantime. Anyway, then I had to go to the doctor's. doctor I'd never met before. She was amazing. I couldn't believe it. She was amazing. And towards the end she said, by the way, what did you do in life? What, what have you been? I said, the last 40 years I've been a minister of the gospel. My husband and I were pastors. Oh, 
now I know what's wrong with you. And I just laughed. She stood up in front of me and she said, don't you give up. Don't you stop preaching. Get out there and spread the word. I thought, I like that sort of doctor. (laughs) But then I did something that you'll think I'm absolutely ridiculous and I don't care at all. Because you see, I went home and I was feeling a bit worn so I lay down for a little while and I'm lying there and I thought to myself, Cut me off. (laughs) Good start. (laughs) I thought, you know what, that garden needs weeding. And I know it's a terrible job. So I went out and I started to weed. I got it all done, which is marvellous. But just as I got up, oh, I've got to tell you what, I am so sore. Anyway, I got up. Oh, it started to rain. And I thought, hallelujah. You know what I did? I went out on my front lawn and I went (laughs) and I danced all over the front lawn and I didn't care if the well-known neighbour was watching me or the neighbours here were watching me. I was free in the Lord to do what I needed to do and I want to say that to you today. Don't hold back when God gives you opportunity to do something. When you have an opportunity to be what he wants you to be. Because I know my week was pretty bad, and um, but I got this proverb. I love anybody like proverbs. Yeah. Proverbs fourteen thirty says this: "A heart at peace gives life to the body." You can look it up in all your versions, but I think it's the NIV, non-inspired version. But it's quite right. A heart of peace, a heart. Of My husband Neville and I used to argue about that all the time because I'd say King James and he'd say NIV. I'd say, forget it. (laughs) Anyway, a heart of peace gives life to the body and how true that is. If you've got a healthy heart, if you've got peace in your heart, there's nothing going to set you off track. And I read this during the week and I sent it to my girl Lillian and she... (laughs) She thought I was meaning what I was saying and I had to say, no, I don't mean that. This, I just said this. It says, sometimes, sometimes on dark days I feel alone and I think that nobody cares. And then I remember who sends thoughts like this and I simply straighten myself and adjust my crown. How about you? Instead of bowing under it, Stand up and adjust your crown. We are sons and daughters of the living God. We are the righteousness of Christ in God. And we can adjust to whatever the situation is. And we've got plenty of situations around our world at the moment. Is that true? God chose you because he knows what you're capable of. And we're all different. (laughs) In our lifetime, we'll experience changes and challenges. But despite all, all that may happen, one thing remains true. Our God remains sure. He doesn't change. He's always there. Recently, as I left a friend's home, they gave me a parcel, a small rectangular parcel. And I don't know if you like me, I like being given parcels. Thank you, Paul. Thank you for my parcel this morning. Appreciate it. From Tasmania. My favourite, one of my favourite places. <laughs> um, and when I got home, I thought I'm going to open it. So I did. It was a square, a rectangular piece of wool. And it had these words printed on it. Let your light shine. Can I use a very crude expression? I was gobsmacked. I was absolutely shaken by what I read. Let your light shine. And I had to ask myself, is your light shining? Can I ask you this morning, is your light shining? This was a fresh challenge to my personality, a fresh challenge to me in my life with Christ. But having the courage to continue on in life to spot 
despite what life puts across our path, is what counts. And if I stop and think of things that have happened in the last nearly eight months in my life, I could be shaken and think, well, I'm not going to go on. But I want to tell you, there is life after death. And we need to get up and keep on. In Psalm 31, 24, in the NCV version, which is the New Century version, <laughs> if you just got one of the others, it doesn't matter. It says, all you who put your hope in the Lord, be strong and brave. All you who put your hope in the Lord, be strong and brave. Remember, to be successful or to have success is not the highest example of life. Just because you're a success doesn't mean to say you're the tops. And if you fail, it's not final or fatal. Just straighten your crown, beloved, and get up and have another go. I had a prime example in my life with my parents who left Victoria to come to Queensland, lost everything in Queensland, but you know what? I remember we, my husband and I, would go around there for dinner quite often of a Saturday night and we always had the same meal, soup. Because you know what? They could buy soup bones for nearly nothing. So that's what we had. Did that worry us? No. They adjusted their crown and kept on in life because they knew there was more to come. And wonderful th things happened to them as you went on. In Deuteronomy 31.8 it says, The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. He's there all the time. Two o'clock this morning, I was still awake. <laughs> and I said, are you there? And I knew he was. He's always there to minister to us and encourage us. The word of God is to be trusted. If you don't have a Bible, get one. I picked mine, this Bible up the other day, which I use as my daily reading, and all the back pages fell out. It's precious. I've got plenty of others, but this one's precious. It's got lots of notes in it. God has promised to be with us in our journey through life and to stay with us through all of life's circumstances. And the scripture that I love and I encourage you to learn if you don't know it, only a few words in Proverbs 30 verse 5 says, every word of God proves true or every word of God is flawless. There's not one word, jot or tittle dotting of the I or the crossing of the T that's wrong in God's word. Yeah. It's his life. And we need to pick up and follow with one another. I just want to mention two gentlemen this morning that I was thinking about as I was writing these notes. They're not found in scripture. But neither are you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but you're important to God too. Both you will know, both you will have heard of. Some of you who were younger may not have had the same understanding of these people. One I know they made a movie of, the other one I'm not sure whether they did. But the first was a man who had many opinions, had a, an attitude about himself. He stirred people in his nation. He was bold, outspoken, persistent, yet, despite the opposition that came against him, his leading saved the nation. Does anybody know who I'm talking about? Sorry? Winston Churchill. Winston Churchill. I remember when we were in Bible college many years ago and we were told the story of him going to a school and it was there end of year, it's a boys' school, end of year speech night. And he was the speaker. I'm sure most of you would have heard of this. But he came and stood at the podium and he just said, 
never give up. Never give up. Never, never give up and sat down. And I want to say that to you, whatever your situation is today, whether it's spiritual, whether it's physical, whether it's financial, whether it's family, whatever your situation, don't give up. Never, never give up. Hold on to the promises of God that he will never leave you or forsake you and all that he has for you will be fulfilled because his word says it will be. I want to tell you that despite what life throws our way, we can keep on. I remember the president of the Bible College, Pastor David Cartledge, is now home with Neville up there playing up in glory. <laughs> he said this one Sunday morning, good things come in cans. I thought, what? I found it in my notes, an old book the other day, going through, good things come in cans. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Can, can. Take the lid off your can if need be but allow him to flow through your life because he has a lot for you to do. And in this day, we need people who are willing to get up off their sit em down and start to do things. It's important. I love what Pastor Bill said this morning. Maybe two services on a Sunday. That'd be great. I could come twice. Oh, that's right. I'm an assembly of God pastor. I'm not an ink pastor. I wonder if they'll give me dual citizenship. <laughs> I've got to laugh about that. Anyway, when they ring up and say, and where do you go to church? I go, Cairns. <laughs> well, where else am I going to say? Gordon Vale, Gelatin, never mind. The other man I want to mention is Albert Einstein. Do you know that he was just an average student at school? It's hard to believe. Do you know that he couldn't even tie his own shoelaces up? Huh. Hope for me. But this man brought amazing change to our world. Don't judge a book by its cover. He became a physicist, whatever that is, who devised this theory of relativity which revolutionised our understanding of space time, gravity, and the universe. He once said, I am so thankful to all the people who said no to me because of, because of them, I did it myself. Don't be put down. Don't allow anybody to say no. If it's wrong, don't. But if before God it's right, do. He understood that he needed to persevere and trust God to be with him. The New King James Version says, oh, I'll read it from the ordinary first. Hebrews 10, 35 says, Don't throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive it. The new King James says, do not lose the courage you had in the past, which was a great reward. You must hold on so you can do what God wants and receive what he has promised. Sometimes because of life, we've had a bump in the road and we don't get over the bump in the road and we stay where we are. But the Lord's saying to us, Grab your courage and get up and go on. When the doctor said to me the other day, don't give up, keep going, do it, I thought, I certainly will. I'm not that old. Life is a journey filled with continuous situations. Despite inadequacies and insufficiencies, we can be all that God has planned for us to be. If we get up and have a go, 
Sally. Why, we, why be a spectator when we can be a participator? Good things come in the cans, as I said before. And I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You know what? If you're complaining about getting bigger in a certain part, get up off it and start doing something with your life. Sorry, Pastor Bill. <laughs> it's not just about who we are. It's not that you're just a somebody. Is anybody anything but a somebody here this morning? Come on, you're all somebody. <laughs> um, you're not just one of the people or about our place or position in life, but it's about who we allow God to be in and through our life. Do you know what? You have the same Bible as I do. How come I read it different to you? Oh, you're a woman. Yep, that's true. But it's got no difference. I'm older. Yep, I've read it a long time. It's got no difference. It's all the same for those who are willing to take it up and read it. We may know, but knowing needs to be girded. I like that word. It's like preparing for action. It's like putting on your armour. We need to be girded or armed with wisdom. And wisdom is established in our lives because we take the time to learn the difference. Thank you. We take the time to learn the difference between right and wrong. Do you know what? Sometimes we have to stop and think, yep, mum did it that way, grandma did it that way, dad did it that way, but you know what? They were wrong because this is an easier way. And we have much to help us in this day. Don't stay where you are. James 1.5 says, if any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. That's our God. Life is all about knowing who we are and who we believe in as we journey by faith. And faith is knowing who's at the other end of the journey. If you don't know who's at the other end of the journey, you need to find out. Faith is stepping out when you don't know, but you believe because the word of God says it. It's like Wi-Fi. Faith is invisible, but it has the power to connect you to what you need. The Apostle Paul, formerly a prominent religious man, found a way to deal with all he faced in life and it was through his relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Philippians 14, he wrote, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Or the message version says, whatever I am, have, wherever I am, I can make it through anything in the one who makes me who I am. Sometimes it's good to read other versions. The influence of others in our lives can change who we are. How true that is. But life is not about changing who we are to fit in and be part of the crowd. It's about being who God made us to be. Do you really know what God wants to do with your life? Does anybody here know what God wants to do? to do in their life. I just saw a young woman prayed for this morning. Her and her husband are stepping forward into something fresh and new, but they're following what God's saying to their life. Are you? <laughs> Have you stopped long enough to hear what he has to say to you? Oh, my favourite TV program's on. I'm disappointed my favourite TV program's not on anymore. I won't tell you what it was. <laughs> wasn't too bad, but have you stopped long enough to hear what he has to say? A friend of mine had a little grand, has a little granddaughter. She was always popping in and out of her bedroom because my friend is an older lady and a little page 
is just a tiny little tot, about six, maybe seven now. And she said, Nana, how do you know about God? How do you know what God's saying to you? And her grandma said, stop, be quiet and listen. And this little girl did. She stopped and she listened. And then she came to Nana and said, God told me to be a friend to all. This little girl wasn't very clever at school in what she was supposed to be doing. But you know, at the end of the year, she won the empathy prize. She was always there for someone. That's a great prize, hey? Well, this is it, Lorraine. I want to talk to you this morning from a children's story. I was praying one day and the Lord dropped some things into my heart and I thought, oh. And then that afternoon a friend came to visit and said, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to go and watch a video. What are you going to watch the video of? I said, the three little pigs. And we're going to talk about the three little pigs this morning. We've talked about a lot of things, but three little pigs. Anybody heard the story? Anybody know this? Anybody not know the story? The three little pigs hopping and puffing and blow your house down? <laughs> I'm sure that we've heard and we know the outcome of the big bad wolf. But what about the three little pigs and their lives? What do we hear about them? To begin, they belonged to the pig family. <laughs> there was a daddy pig and a mummy pig and they were the little pigs. And it just happened that they were the three little pigs. <laughs> but each held a different perspective on life. Isn't that true of us? I've got three boys and I'll tell you what, they're chalk cheese and I don't know what the other one is, but they're certainly different. And you love them all. Their lives were different. And you know, we win or lose by the way we choose. There came a day when we each chose to step away from the family influence to live life their way. It came to a time when mum and dad couldn't teach anymore and so we're going to step out and do it our way. So the three of them took off. The first little pig, now I'm going to be a bit hard now, so please hold your seats. The first little pig stepped out and chose to build his life house with straw. Correct? When it was finished, it certainly resembled a house just like some folk have an appearance of Christ in their life. Ooh. How true. It certainly resembled, but it wasn't. Now, straw, no matter how you dress it up, is still dry grass. You can do what you like with it. Put it in a vase, put it on a wall, do it, but it's still just dry grass. And when life's situations blew... And the big bad wolf of life came against this house. It didn't stand its chance, for it had no substance. Let's have a look at straw house people for a moment. Are you a straw house person? I'm not looking. There's many straw house people in the world. Many people have a belief in a God. And you can agree with me because you can go to all the nations of the world and they'll believe in a God of some kind, all types, even in churches, big churches. There are many religions that follow their God or church people who get, add God to their lifestyle. In 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 4, this is a tough scripture. 
Paul said, mark this. There will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. My, that's a mouthful. But verse 5 says this, these are those who have a form of godliness. They hold to a form of religion but deny the power of it. And Paul says from such, turn away. Well, Paul also would have said, avoid straw house people who state they are Christians, who state they are Christians with their mouth, but there's no evidence of fruit or change in their life. Dress up for Sunday, uh -oh. and Monday, it's my life, my way. I've been there. Have you been there? But when you find the Lord Jesus Christ, it's every day, church, with him. So, poor little piggy. The second big piggy built his house from sticks. Now, sticks are just pieces of wood, correct? The stick house certainly looked strong. It presented a strong outward appearance. It had taken time and effort to gather the sticks and to build the house. But when the adversary, the wolf, came, what happened to it? Huffed and puffed and it blew it down. Wood itself is a symbol of strength and growth. It is used in so many ways, but there's no life in a piece of wood because it's been separated from its life source. Stick people are in constant danger for they are no longer connected to the branch. In John 15, 5, Jesus speaks about the vine and its branches. I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. I can put as many sticks as I like in my garden, but they're not going to bear anything. They're just dry pieces of wood. There are many stick Christians. Oh, I'm being hard again. Some who wear the brand but fail to depend on Christ, so live life their way. And others who have an opinion that their church is the vine and have attached themselves to a religious system. Mm. But none of these sticks Christians can bear or sustain real fruit for only those connected to the living, kind, living vine, Jesus Christ, will bear fruit. Now these two little pigs enjoyed their life in their houses they didn't seem to have much problem. Come into my straw house. Come to my stick house. Let's have a cup of tea. Let's have a party. <laughs> but they hadn't taken the time to prepare, prepare for when the adversary came. And he did come knocking at the door. They tried to keep him out, but their houses had no strength. And when he huffed, and he puffed, he blew their houses down. Two pigs. Now there's a third pig. He built his house from bricks. He took time and effort in laying a strong foundation. And we can lay a good foundation for our lives, for the word of God is the bricks we lay in our lives. In Psalm 119, verse 105, it says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And I want to encourage you, if you haven't done so, 
read Psalm 119 and take a pen. It'll only mark your Bible or a pencil and write how many times the word is mentioned and what the word means in Psalm 119. My first day in Bible college, we were given Psalm 119, verse 165, which says, Great peace have they that love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. I was in a room with young people and older people, and did I get offended? Mm-hmm. <laughs> they weren't all clever like me. We need to read what the word says. Now, when the wolf came to the brick house, something happened. He huffed and he puffed. He intimidated. He threatened and used every tactic he could to get through the door. But he couldn't blow the brick house down. And that's how we need to be in Christ. He can huff and he can puff. When I danced on my lawn on Friday, that's what I did. You can huff. And you can puff, but I'm standing in Christ. I'm getting wet, but boy, am I loving that rain. That's what we need to do. Why couldn't he blow the house down? Because this pig had built a right foundation. Hallelujah. The accuser makes a career out of accusing us, but we know that Jesus Christ is within us. He's come to rob, kill and destroy, but Christ has come to give us life. I think we know that a foundation is the basic structure of something, correct? When builders prepare to build, they dig deep usually. The higher it's going to be, the deeper it's going to be, and then they lay a foundation. Our faith in Jesus Christ is the basic foundation and structure of our life. I'll say that again. Our faith in Jesus Christ is the basic foundation and structure of our life. What foundation have you been laying in your life? I'll be bold to ask again. What foundation have you been laying in your life? In 1 Corinthians 3.11 it says, there's no foundation that anyone can lay that which other than that which is Christ Jesus. We can spend a lifetime waiting for situations to change, for something to happen in our lives, but our life will not change until we take the initiative to do something about our situation. I was talking to my son on the phone yesterday morning I was in the bathroom and I was snipping a bit of my hair. He said, Mum, yes, you do need a haircut. I just thought, why didn't I just do an ordinary telephone call? Why did he have to be watching me? Well, you know, this is life. And people are watching us all the time. And the enemy's watching us. But you know, greater is he that is in us. He's the greater we can spend a lifetime waiting for things to change, for something to happen, but we need to take the initiative to do something for it to happen. King David wrote in Psalm 11 verse 3, If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Oh, that's a powerful scripture. What can we do if the foundations are destroyed? If you don't have a foundation, you need to start shaking yourself up and standing on the foundation which is Christ Jesus and the bricks of his word. God sometimes shakes things so that we will work on building and maintaining our foundation. In these days we're living in, it's time to secure these foundations in our life. In Romans 10, 17 it says, Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Life is difficult and demanding, but we can endure by standing on the strong foundation we have built. One of the things I would encourage you to do is write in your Bible. <gasps> I 
I don't write in my Bible because it's the holy book. How many times when you are somewhere or in bed or reading at home and God gives you something and you don't write it down? And I love going back through my Bible and seeing over the years where God said this and God said that and has a date beside it. Make sure you write notes, read and listen and date what he says to you. You're not going to hurt your Bible. It is, after all, only paper with words written on it. Sorry if I've offended you, but I'm not really. <laughs> Philippians 4, 8 says, Whatever true, whatsoever is honourable, whatsoever is right, whatsoever is pure, lovely, of a good report, if there is any excellence, and if anything is worthy of praise, let your mind dwell on these things. If you have lived in the assumption that your straw house will save you, after all, you do go to church now and then. We go for Christmas and we go for Easter and we might go for oh, something else. Are you a straw Christian who doesn't consider? And I'm not saying you have to come to clear every Sunday. Not bad though. But you go where God puts you to go. Sometimes I'm here and sometimes there. But I don't want to miss being with God's people in his house on his day. Or maybe you know that you're a stick person and you're stable in the wood church. But no religion will save you. I don't care how many times you bob up and down or cross yourself or I'm being very naughty, but you know what? No religion will save you. We need to become a brick person and build a strong foundation in Jesus Christ. It's never too late to start. There isn't anything that we have done should have done or that's been done to us then keep that can keep god from loving us <laughs> his love is constant and his love is unstoppable and he will never leave you or forsake you failure doesn't make you a failure it's not winning to change that does so let's make a change and let's take a stand to build on a firm foundation. Line up our life with the bricks of God's word. Don't give up. Don't give in. Go on and fulfil the God plan for your life. Listen to the story of the three little pigs. It's amazing what people put on line about the story. But I don't want to be a straw pig and I don't want to be a stick pig. I want to be a brick pig. <laughs> and I like the crackling as well. <laughs> we take what God gives us. My life hasn't been easy in the last while. But I know others. I know many others in similar situations all around the world. Jerusalem at the moment. My friend who lives right in the middle of the city, I think, ah, but you know what? Is she coming home? No. People need to hear the gospel. And that's what we do. We stand and see the house built. We can't build it, but God can build it through our lives. So bless you this morning. I encourage you, take your pen Write in your Bible, take your Bible, open it and read it and see what God will say to you. Thank you, Pastor Bill. Thank you, Pastor Jen. So going to ask the band to come up. While they're coming up, is it very interesting? I love that analogy of the 
straw and the stick and the, the bricks. It's so actually while I was sitting there, and God actually just gave me another insight on this thing. Do you know that in Egypt they used to mix straw in their bricks? And God said, come out of, come out of Egypt. We need to leave the way that the world does things and come into what God wants. And if God wants to build us, because remember the word of God says that it's Christ who builds. And unless Christ builds the house, those who labor, labor in vain. But he uses us. We are the house of God. We are his bricks. In Australia, we use Besser brick. But in South Africa, we used to use clay bricks. And clay is just clay. But you know what? They actually used to add ash to it. And ash tells me that something has died. Something has given up its life in order to be what needs to be. And then that clay gets put into fire and gets tempered. It gets hardened. That becomes the brick that is used to build a house. Listen, when God uses us to build a house, He doesn't use straw. He doesn't use the things of Egypt. He uses us who are His chosen vessels. And yes, we will go through the fire. And yes, we will have to deny ourselves. But we will become the, the bricks that God uses to build His church. Thank you, Pastor Jenny. Wonderful message. Let's give Pastor Jenny another hand. So good. So good. I want us all just to stand. Praise God. I love it when God's working in our lives. God is doing something and God is stirring up in us. I want us all just to bow our heads. If you're a Christian, you can be praying. Pastor Jenny used another analogy. That sometimes we travel a long life and we hit these bumps in the road. And these bumps in normal circumstances can be just another bump. Sometimes they can be very difficult to overcome. I'm reminded of a friend of mine who had a very valuable car, a Ferrari. Exceptionally valuable car. This particular car was probably about an inch and a half off the ground. And he came and showed all of us but in the road was a speed bump. Do you know that he couldn't get over it? Him and his beautiful car, his amazing car, he couldn't get over the speed bump. He had to turn around and go the other way. And I'm asking you this morning, what is in your life that is stopping you from getting across a speed bump? that speed bump is holding you back from eternal life. What is holding you back from making a decision to meet the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Is it something of value in this world? Is it you protecting yourself from losing, going backwards or whatever? I want you really to ask yourself, because listen, the value of eternal life is huge. There's nothing in this world that is more valuable than eternal life. And Jesus Christ paid that price for you so that you could have it. He hung on a cross. He took your punishment and your sin upon that cross so that you can be set free from it. Now all you need to do is make a decision and accept Him as Lord and Savior. Accept Him as your King. While Christians are praying, 
I want to give you that opportunity. If you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, today is the day of salvation. Today is that opportunity. And all you have to do is just raise your hand and say, Pastor, Bill, please pray for me. I want to make Jesus Christ my Lord and Savior. If that's you this morning, just raise your hand. Jesus is here this morning and he's watching. He's seeing every single one of you. He sees your heart. He sees where you're at. And he's not going to let go. He's not going to walk out just because you choose not to. He will walk after you. He will chase you down. He's the God who leaves the 99 and goes after the one. Because he loves. Because he knows how valuable eternal life is. All you've got to do is raise your hand and say, Pastor, well, please pray for me. For those who are watching online, let us pray this prayer. You can say these words after me. Father God, I thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who hung on a cross in my place where I should have been because of all my sin. He became sin so that I can be set free and become the righteousness of God. I accept you as my Lord and as my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Well, listen, if you're online and you've given your life to Christ, we would love to hear from you. You can jump online and go visit our website. You can write to us and you can just tell us what decision you've made and how you've made it. And we'd love to walk this journey with you. Amen. Listen, I believe that it's our responsibility to to nurture and make disciples. Listen, if you are walking this, this road, this journey with Jesus Christ by yourself and you're not discipling someone, I encourage you, find someone you can disciple. Encourage them. Get around their life. Speak life into them. Listen, God will use you and He will strengthen you and He will work in your life because you are working in somebody else's life. You don't have to judge them. You don't have to criticize them. You have to just shine the light. Be the example. Walk the talk. As Pastor Jenny showed us, be the piggy that lives in a brick house. Amen. We're going to continue to worship God. I'm going to open up the front here if you need prayer. It doesn't matter what it's for. God is present. He will meet that need. Whether it's for healing in your body or you just want to touch from God, uh, or you want to feel close to Him, or you just need a job, or whatever, or you need an answer, well, God is that solution. God is the answer. He's the way, the truth, and the life. If you need prayer, please come forward. We'll have our team come, come out and pray for you. We're going to continue to worship God. We have got our second service outside, which you can uh, grab a, something to drink and to eat and fellowship. We'd love to catch up with you, hear how you, your week was been, and uh, certainly get to know you better. Let's just pray and close the service. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for your amazing grace, for this word, Lord, that has been given to us, Lord. Help us to walk in your ways. Help us to draw closer to you. Lord, help us to never give up and to press in and to continue to walk with our eyes fixed on you. We honor you and praise you, Lord. And I ask, Lord God, as everyone goes their different ways, Lord, that you would cause your face to shine upon them and give them peace and give them rest but also give them a word in their hearts, Lord, to declare your good news to those around them. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless you all. Thanks for coming. See you. Have a great week. See you same time next week. Bless you all. If you want to hang around and and, uh, worship God some more, you're more than welcome.